Today, we're going to be taking a look at eight VFL AFL clubs that almost joined the league and were a possible consideration to join this competition. We'll kick things off with the first team on the list, and this team is arguably the most surprising of the lot, if you guys haven't heard of this. And this was a $10 million proposed idea to have a club in America known as the Los Angeles Crocodiles. Could you just think about that? A game in America. Of course, this was in 1987, so the VFL was still what it was called, and this was in hopes to truly expand the game internationally. And this was gonna be made by relocating an already established VFL club. And at the time, it was most likely a club who was in real depth, so you're looking at maybe a Fitzroy Footscray, but no clubs were talked about in specifics. The ambitious proposal was set in 1987 in hopes to actually follow through and happen in 1988. The idea is only just created one year, and you expect it, the club to actually form the next year and play in the VFL. The hopes were to gain an average of 20,000 supporters in their opening season, and the guy who proposed the idea, Errol Marin, believed that, that they would require a 100,000 capacity stadium in just five years, which is just truly ambitious. But of course, over time, if this were to have been successful, you know, over the coming years, there'd be more, you know, American-born players that would play for this side. And in 10, 15 years, I would probably say majority of the side would be American-born, of course, being at the Los Angeles Crocodiles. But of course, the real question on everyone's minds is how is this gonna work with travel times? It's already difficult enough traveling from Perth to Melbourne for four hours. How are they gonna be expecting a side to travel from LA to Melbourne 17 hours and back every week? I mean, that, that's what, one of the longest flights in the world. And they had a plan in mind to separate all the games in blocks. So two to three games will be played in Melbourne or in Australia, and then they'll fly back to LA play a couple games there and then play you know, another four game block the following weeks. And they wouldn't play all games in LA. They'd have games split between America and Australia to limit the travel time. But of course we all know that didn't end up happening and ultimately the board rejected the decision, mainly due to the long travel times, I believe, from LA to Melbourne. I think that was the main reason why it led to the decision not happening. I'm sure there were other reasons, but the bid was rejected in October 1987. And since then, there has not been a single game played outside of Australia in America. But could you just imagine if this bid actually followed through and we actually had a team based in America for the last 34 years? How different could this league have become? The next team that was proposed was the Fremantle Sharks. It was discussed in 1987, just after the entrance of West Coast in the league, that rival WAFL clubs East and South Fremantle would merge as the second Perth team. And they would be known as the Fremantle Sharks and they'll have their home games played at Fremantle Oval. Of course, though, that didn't happen in 1987. But then six years later, when the AFL accepted Fremantle into the league, they were going to be set to be known as the Fremantle Sharks. However, then on the 21st of July, 1994, the name Fremantle Dockers was adopted instead, as well as the club colors of purple, green, red, and white at the time. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the Fremantle Sharks is a better name for the Dockers. I mean, I feel like if that went through, I would have preferred that over the Dockers. I know why the Dockers are a name, but I'll be honest with you, I'm just surprised in general that there aren't any sides in the AFL that are known as the Sharks. I mean, the Gold Coast Sharks would have been much better than the Gold Coast Suns. Fremantle Sharks, more intimidating than the Fremantle Dockers. The next side to have made a proposed bid for the AFL was a Canberra-based side. Well, Canberra, they have played many different offers in becoming its own team during the VFL-AFL era. Now, many probably didn't know this, but they were actually the first team to express interest in fielding a team outside of Victoria, and they actually made their first bid in 1981. Of course, though, the VFL, they rejected the side and opted for a Sydney side instead. Canberra then made a further bid in 1990 and aims to field a reserve side in 1991, which the ACT AFL hoped that in future would lead to a senior side in the AFL. Of course, this didn't eventuate and all this progress eventually failed due to Port Adelaide's bid, which they made in a similar time where the AFL instead decided to draw all their focus on expanding the league in South Australia, which ultimately is the better call. I mean, let's be real, no one really cares too much about Aussie rules in Canberra, ACT or New South Wales to begin with. Now, Fitzroy during the 1980s and the 1990s were a dire state. You know, of, of course, Fitzroy, they were very financially unstable at the time. They didn't have their own home tenants. They were playing home grounds at random grounds. They, they, were, they were on a complete mess. And I think their last couple of seasons, they won like a total of three or four games. And during this time, the Fitzroy Lions were linked to have merged with a huge number of different clubs in this period. There's a whole Wikipedia article on it. Like, just look at all these different sides. I'm not going to go through them all because this video would last forever, but we'll go through a couple. The first one we'll discuss will be the Melbourne Lions. And in 1986, it was proposed that both the Melbourne Football Club and the Fitzroy Football Club would merge to form a new club, the Melbourne Lions, ahead of the 1987 VFL season. And the proposed Guernsey was said to include Melbourne's traditional red and blue Guernsey with a gold band separating both 
colors and the addition of a gold line. Now at the time, they rejected this bid, but eight years later, they met again to discuss in 1994 to possibly merge a second time. However, the Melbourne board agreed ultimately on the fact that the name was a problem and that both clubs lacked a permanent training venue and had limited resources to make the new merger club strong and powerful. Now, the second possible merged club between Fitzroy were the North Fitzroy Kangaroos, and this was in talks in 1996 ahead of the 1997 season. And instead of having both Brisbane Bears and Fitzroy to merge clubs, initially it was actually North Melbourne and Fitzroy to have been involved in the merge. And this was actually seen as very likely to possibly happen ahead of the 1997 season. The merge was said to occur in May of that year to help reverse Fitzroy's financial position. And the reason why this actually didn't follow through was because at the time during the 1996 season, Fitzroy were placed in administration and they eventually accepted a merger offer from the Brisbane Bears, which formed the Brisbane Lions. Could you just imagine though, if they actually went through with this idea and North ended up winning that flag that season? Their last game known as the North Melbourne Kangaroos would have been the same year they would have won the flag. That just would have been absolutely insane if that actually ended up happening. The next proposed side on this list is Sandful Bay side and the Norwood Redlegs. Now, of course, Norwood Redlegs, they still play in the Sandful. But in 1990, Norwood had discussions with the AFL to possibly become the second South Australian club to enter the league. And yeah, this was a heavy consideration. A special meeting was in fact held by the Sandful to discuss all of this. And then it was decided by everyone eventually who was in attendance that any further discussions with the AFL had to be made through the Sandful. And because of this, this essentially put an end to Norwood's possible AFL license. But get this, the power decided to do the complete opposite of this and instead ignored the agreement entirely by instead going behind the Sandfall's back and they eventually were awarded a license in 1994 for just going behind the Sandfall's back, not telling anyone about their deals and meetings with the AFL, which gave them the license in 1994 to become a side and play in the AFL in 1997. So uh, it could have been the Norwood Redlegs. You know, we could have been talking about the Norwood Redlegs instead of Port Adelaide in the AFL. Now the next proposed side was the possibility of launching an Irish dominated side, which would be held in Sydney. It was a radical idea proposed in March of 2008 to launch a pretty much Irish dominated side which would have been located in Sydney's West and to be known as the Sydney Celtics. Now, supposedly the idea was proposed and considered after the success of the International Rule Series in 2006 between Ireland and Australia, when Gaelic Players Association executive put forward the idea. However, as expected, the AFL never really took this idea very seriously and instead focused their attention on the creation of the GWS Giants, which happened in 2012. And let's be real, of all the proposed teams I've mentioned so far in this video, this is definitely the one that was least likely to happen. I mean, let's be honest, it was never going to happen. Now, I've saved one of the most infamous proposed mergers and probably the one that everyone knows about most. I'd argue was most likely of actually eventuating would have been the Melbourne Hawks. And for those who don't know about this, I'll go through this in more detail. This was, yeah, one of the most infamous proposed mergers of all time in the AFL. It was the idea of merging the Melbourne Demons and the Hawthorne Hawks to become the Melbourne Hawks. This was during the period in the 80s, 90s, where, you know, Adelaide, West Coast, teams from South Australia, Western Australia, Queensland were entering the league and the AFL truly wanted to make the league national. And in order to do so, and to make room for the more teams nationally, they wanted to merge smaller Victorian clubs together, which, you know, obviously at the time made sense. Now, this was so close to actually end up happening that they already had designs such as the Team Guernsey team logo and even club song ready made. It would have kept the Guernsey design of Melbourne's however feature a gold V and a gold hawk instead. And not only that, but they also had a new club song ready made which would have combined the lyrics of both Melbourne's and Hawthorne's theme songs. Now under the package that was offered by the AFL, it meant that the club, if this were to have actually happened, would have received a 6 million payout over three years, which would have significantly strengthened their financial position because of course, at the time, Hawthorne, even though they were winning grand finals year after year, they were under real financial hardship. Whereas Melbourne, well, they didn't really have a central base themselves. I mean, they were playing home games in bloody Junction Oval and they had their administration facilities in Jollymont. It was just all over the shop. Of course, though, this merger proposal, as expected, led to major anger, frustration, and hostility of the fans of these original clubs, especially Hawthorne fans though, who were the main voice of disapproval. Now, of course, we all know that this didn't end up happening, this merge, and the reason was because they gave it to the members. They gave them the choice to choose whether they wanted the merger to happen or not. The Melbourne members, quite surprisingly, voted in favor of the merge. It was quite a close vote for them. However, the Hawthorne members, they overwhelmingly voted against it, and from there, the proposal was no longer continued, and the Melbourne Hawks never actually became a reality in the AFL. Now, of course, I didn't go over every club because I could have easily gone over Tasmania or the Northern Territory, but 
I feel like that would have just taken too long to discuss. And you would have already known watching this video that those two clubs have already made a bid to enter the league multiple times. But I, I thought I'd keep it short, make it the eight teams instead. I do want to make more videos sort of similar to this where I look back on different topics on the AFL when there's really nothing relevant to post in the AFL at the moment, nothing really to talk about. So if you've got any other videos possibly similar to this one right here, and let me know which of these mergers or proposed AFL sides would you have liked to have seen most in the AFL. Oh, 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 oh,